Mark Dunning here at San Diego Comic Con with Tyler and Bex from Voltron Legendary Defender. Now we just saw season three, episode one, and we also found out we're going to be getting more Voltron in a <laughs> shorter amount of time. Uh, how did that affect uh, building these characters, knowing that you had a, originally a longer season to develop, or was it was it better to be like, oh, okay, we're done in seven? Well, actually, our uh, our recording seasons are far longer than even our airing yeah. seasons before now, mm -hmm. and they've just gotten shorter, so it really doesn't change anything. anything hey, wait, hmm, sorry, English. Rewind, stop, yeah. cut. <laughs> you edit that out. Yep. Go ahead. Go. Take your time. Take a breath. Take two. All right, here we go. She's ready. <laughs> Take two. They're small. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> I forgot what I was saying now. I know, anyway. I mean, whole, uh, I'm sorry. I appreciated it. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it all comes down to editing and how they stitch everything together. Mm. Our performances remain the same. Mm. Yeah, like the, the camaraderie in the booth that I can't stop talking about mm -hmm. is like, it's so prevalent in every recording session. Like, we just, we all really, really like each other. Sometimes Andrea and I can't even get us to like, actually record. We're so busy <laughs> talking to each other and catching up. Sorry. Uh, because there's just so much to talk about week to week. We're just like, hey, I haven't seen you in five days. Uh, Here's <laughs> what you missed. <laughs> uh, but no, it's like, I think kudos to casting and to Joaquin and Lauren and Tim and uh, Andrea and everybody for sort of assembling this cast initially. It, there's almost zero work now to get into recording. That, that's excellent. Yeah, I mean, we, we are putting in emotional you know, oh, yeah. uh, investment and time and work, but it just is so uh, established and it's so mm -hmm. easy to just we, get in there and slide into it. Yeah, sorry. We know, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean no, to no, no. We know our characters and we know each other mm -hmm. so well that we can be in the middle of a conversation and just snap into whatever line we have mm -hmm. next. It's Amazing. It's well, speaking of scary, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of how well you know your characters, we got a little bit of a glimpse of where we're headed in season three with Pidge and Hunk. Uh, with Pidge, we find out the depths and the just the meat and potatoes. Sorry to take from the food world that uh, she's willing to go in terms of analyzing every little bit of speck of data. Do you think that will ever become a detriment to team team building? Um, has that motion comic come out yet? Oh. So it's being really well, the really comic is... So we'll find out soon. The comic is out, but the motion comic isn't. Yeah. So if you've read the comic, you know that Pidge keeps a database in her head of all her <laughs> friends and her um, fellow paladins mm -hmm. and their s strengths and weaknesses. And fortunately, so mm -hmm. far, the only time she's had to use that against them is in the comic. Mm -hmm. Hopefully she won't ever be manipulated into using that for evil. So she's Batman. Yeah. She's Batman. Okay, cool. You don't, you don't push Pitch. You just don't push her around. Uh, so some, one of the cool things that's happening in San Diego is we have a Hunks Food Goo food truck. And I want to know from both of you, when you first saw Food Goo, first, uh, we'll get off of that, um, but what did you think it tasted like? So I actually posited that food goo was akin to sort of like slimy okra when it hasn't been totally like rendered out. Have you ever right. had that where the yeah. okra is like fried and still got like that yeah. gooey got a slime? Bit of grit to it. It's almost got that like, and then I thought maybe you mix in some aloe. <laughs> so it's like a little real slimy, a little bucket of slime kind of tasting, and then smooth the whole thing out with some kind of like tuber, some sort of mashed tuber. Like right. a, you know, not a potato per se, because we're talking about other worlds here, but something similar to a potato. So That's I, amazing. Yeah, I, 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 listen, I used to read you Dr. Seuss books, oh, and, okay. I would, and I would see like, you know, in like Dr. Seuss books, there's always those kind of like, those weird, like kind of gooey, yeah. you know, and the yeah. trees look like you could eat them and everything. And I always imagined what Dr. Seuss books tasted like. I don't even know why. So it was always for me, I just had every book that I loved from him was like associated with a flavor. You're one of my favorite people <laughs> for this reason. That's amazing. <laughs> so when I first saw Food Girl, I was like, ah. Uh, I think I know what that tastes like. <laughs> Everything has been building up to this moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus, uh, it's called food goo. You know. Yeah. Yeah. How, how far can you go? It's wide open, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Looking Thank super you. looking forward to seasons three and four, and I hope you have a good rest of your con. Thank you. It's you too. You, Thank you. Good to see you.